Thank you very much, uh, all people. I guess that you. I hope that you're having a great time here, in Paris. Is everybody French or then English native people here? Yes. Yeah. Thanks. I'm very happy you came because it's been maybe five years that you haven't spoken English. Then please excuse me, and I think that the more I speak, the clearer it will get. I hope. And for French people, feel free to ask questions in French or English, whatever you like. Um, what is AP Spark? Have you heard of AP Spark? Is this little bee that flies around uh, these days? Yeah, who's heard of it? Nobody? Okay, one, two. Thank you. Thank you, people. Uh, in fact, we are, I'm very pleased you joined us today. Uh, I'm in charge of uh, the development of AP Spark. I run the teams, the development teams, and uh, the company is very well known for a Westlet framework. The so Westlet framework is a component that helps you build web APIs. And today, uh, what I want to give you, the information I want to give you is how to build a web API. Everybody talks about web API, but I, I'm sure you want your own web API. Or, or maybe tomorrow, or maybe in a year or so, but you'll want one day your web API. And today we're gonna see how we can concretize this vision. If you want to keep in touch with me, you've got my, my email, just feel free to come back to us. We want your feedback. What's going to be the life cycle of your web API project? Have you got any web API projects today? Two, three, four, okay. Who is already running his own API? Yes, some people do. Good, good, Jacob. Um, well, what do you usually do? You must first think about what's going to be this API. What does I want to exp what what to expose to people? Uh, maybe a list of contacts, a list of books. Maybe it's going to be a company API uh, about banking accounts, holders, pieces. I don't know what's going to be your job, but you'll always want to create these business aspects or your hobbyist aspects, your photos, your family. Then, once you've done that, you're going to host it, put it somewhere, make it live. Next, you'll manage it. You want to look at who's consuming, who's using your web API. And in the end, people, you use it, and you want to make it publicly available to advertise for it. We're going to promote it. And there's two ways to do that. First is to build it from scratch. If you're a developer, you know how to do that, whether it's in PHP, Python, Java, whatever the language. Or you may use the platform, a platform that will help you do that. And we talked today about API Spark and see the two possibilities you've got. Build it from scratch, this web API, with the REST Red framework that we provide as open source. And you can take this code, use it, and create your API with. Or you'll use the platform as a service. And it's going to be your choice. The REST Red framework is open source. That's no price to pay. You can ask for support if you want, but most people manage to use it like it is. The platform as a service API Spark is, comes with a freemium plan, which means that today you can start right after the session, you come to the platform and you use it right away. Let's go into the details. First, we'll go with, your, with the do-it-yourself approach. Then you've got a blank page, and we start this API project. You need a component to build it. The REST Red framework is uh, well known in the REST community. It's been started, the project started in 2005, almost eight years. Uh, it comes with a lot of additions. You can run the REST Red framework on Java machines, Google App Engine, Android systems, on top of Tomcat, NetEye, Simply, whatever you like. Uh, you put it on, it's gonna be the foundation of your API. It's largely used. There's very few people when I meet technical teams that don't know the REST Let framework. If you haven't got the experience, taken the experience yet to, to experiment the REST Let framework, I propose you go to the website restlet.org and uh, take the tutorial and have your first web API built with the REST Let framework. The API, the API Spark platform that I'll talk later about is also built on top of the REST Let framework. I will go into technical details for a few minutes just to give you some insights about the way you work with the REST-LED framework and how it can help you if you want to build your own web API. 
The REST-LED framework comes, it comes as a REST-LED uh, Java component that you, you will host in your application. And it can be also embedded into a, an Android system or in the Tomcat application. Then you'll have to choose if it's self-hosted or embedded, depending on your deployment topology. Internally, the framework, the, the, the REST-LED framework propose you to, to take the calls, this is all the, those A, B, C calls, the messages that are coming, then you can filter them and give it back to another resource, or you can route them. Filtering and routing is what you need when you build a web API. Next, um, from a development perspective, you be able to work in a very hazy fashion with annotated Java interface. This is for Java developers. Have we got Java developers here today? Okay, then take your interface, annotate it, and right away you'll be able to generate server resources and client, consume your API. When you work on an API, I don't know if you listen to the conversation, the person Tony from context.io I just before. Most of the time, there's a lot of protocols to handle. Is it SMTP? What is what, what we call the payload? Will it be JSON? Will it be another type of format? A proprietary format? A new format? What's you, what you need when you build an API is an easy way to transform your data. Maybe it will come as an XML, and you'll transform it to JSON. And maybe the people that talks to me talks in French, and I want to give me a French version of my, of my payload. Because the conversion service is something really important and that you have to think of when you're talking about API. It means what's going to be the language I'm going to speak with my API. And to finish with protocols. We're talking a lot about HTTP those days, and we at API Spark and RESTlet invest a lot in HTTP. But there are some also protocols that may be useful. The REST-LED framework is pretty extensible. You can choose different protocols. And to finish with, there's one discussion I had a few minutes ago with the people at our booth right uh, on the uh, on below floor. Um, it was about, yes, but I've got data inside my company. And those data already exist. How can they? Make them an API tomorrow. Uh, uh, they are inside my data center, and I want to take it to take them out and to expose them. In fact, there's two ways to do that. Either you will self-host your web API, and so your your web API will be close to your data inside your data centers, or you can build a tunnel, and this tunnel will be the vehicle of your data through the cloud and your web API will be hosted in the cloud. Both topology exist. It's a choice that you'll have inside your organization, and maybe from some projects with very sensitive data, it will be a, you will have good reason to self-host your web APIs, and for other projects, you'll have good reasons to host those web APIs in the cloud. If you want to have this flexibility, we provide inside the REST-LED framework a SDLC, a SDC tunnel. It is a technology from Google that is pretty open, and you can install an agent and make your data available to the web, and go to the cloud securely and re-expose your web API. This is a technology from an enterprise perspective you would be interested in, uh, in uh, observing and uh, experimenting too. We finish with the homemade approach, custom approach, you build it from scratch. This is what the rest of the framework will help you, and this was about my introduction. Next, I want to talk today about API Spark, the PaaS approach. What is the PaaS? PaaS, platform as a service. What does that mean? That means that I want everything instantly. I want a service that is given to me right away and that is scalable. This is what a platform as a service gives me. API Spark is the spirit of building API in minutes. No need to be technical, no need to rely on, on specific skills about web APIs, no need to learn about payloads and all those. I want to build my own web API pretty quickly, but I want to control it at the same time and to make it very flexible. 
Then from the knowledge we had about the RESTless framework, the usage of companies in enterprises, large companies, I showed you about our, our testimonials and our customers and partners. Uh, we built this brand new platform. We're very pleased to announce yesterday the public beta, and you'll be able to experiment it by yourself now. And what comes with the API, the API Spark platform? Some, a lot of people tell me, but who are you? What are you doing? How do you compare to other people? In fact, there's no real company today that does this. This is what we call an all-in-one platform. What we do with API Spark, you will build, you will, you will describe what you want as a web API. This is an IDE, Integrated Development Environment. Then we'll deploy an API. This is the hosting port. And to finish with, we will pro promote, we will go to a marketplace where we will tell about our API to users that will be able to take this API to use it and reuse it and, and leverage the investments you did and give it to the public and to a large audience. Web, IDE to develop, hosting to make it live, and or catalog to promote your web API and make profit out of it. Or maybe profit or success anyway. You don't want, you don't want your application to be, to be inside your company and not used. If you build a web API, it's because you've got a strategy. You want to share data and you have to, to have large usage of this data. Then you need the platform to have your web API well known. This is what we call some kind of marketplace. We call it the catalog at API Spark. Then now we're ready to start a web API project. What do we start with? First of all, let's build our source of data. How do I connect? How do I make my data live? First, what I do in a typical project, in a do-it-yourself approach, I will select a database technology, whatever the choice of my technical teams, MySQL. I, you can choose whatever you want. Then it can be a NoSQL database. Then you'll specify a schema. You'll set up your database. And to finish with, you'll work with securing this. This will take maybe a few days if you've got some very, very, very efficient people inside your teams. Most of the time, it will take several weeks to have all this infrastructure uh, hosting and ready. In a platform approach way, you will work like those back-end as a service uh, proposals. It means that from the web ID, you will describe what you want, and we will provision it and, and deploy it right away on our, on our systems. Let's make a quick demo. It's one micro or the other phone. It's, it's not going to be very practical. Can I? Maybe someone will help. Uh, you're, you're the guy. Oh, wait. Thank you very much. This guy is pretty smart. I met him five years ago, I guess. Nice to see you, especially today. Then when you come to the API Spark platform, I also need a connector. We need internet. We need internet. <laughs> what? what? can we do without internet today? Then, come, if you come to the API Spark platform, hmm, let's say I'm connected. I hope so. You come and sign in. We've got a social sign-in solution, which means that you'll choose, no need to, t to create an account, just choose your favorite social provider. Mine is Google at the moment. I've got, I also use GitHub a lot. We propose that. And then we ar arrive in this pretty large area. This is what we call the web ID. And hide it, and you can see we have a complete view about what we propose. 
then this is the API Spark environment where you, you prepare your data. Let's say I want to build a list of contacts. I want to build a data store. It's going to be a contact database. I could also choose to host files and to give files to my customers, maybe images, photos, whatever you want. Okay? Today we'll talk about data. I create, I've just created a room, a bag, when I can host my data. Then I'll create my entities, what I want to expose to my customers. It will be a contact. And each of these those contacts will have a first name. I won't be very original there. You can push me ideas. A last name. And maybe an edge. Let's go for an integer. This is it. I can deploy my new object, my contact, and it's ready to be, it's a bag that is ready to, to, to store data in and to get data out. This is my database I've just built with contacts. If I, I can build others, for example, I would like to connect to an address. I will describe an address. What is it? With a street. And then for my contact, I will be able to add a field where I will reference this address. OK, got it? Then. Thank you. This was for the first part. Backend as a service is this easy way to say, I don't want to build something complex, learning SQL, learning no SQL, learning topology, infrastructure, build as by experts, find the experts, take time to have them come on my project. You know, it's like, a, like an house project. You want to build a new house or you have a great idea and it takes you days, weeks, months to have the people come and work on your project. This first part is the web idea. Very quickly, you go straight to the point. Next aspect. You've, we've got those data. Now we need to export them. How will we do that? In a do-it-yourself approach, you'll take your favorite framework. I would say the REST-led framework on my side, if you got it from the previous slides. Or you may take a Rails technology, a PHP technology, uh, you will describe the, the web APIs you want, the calls you want to make, and then you'll write the code, you'll package it, you'll deploy it, you'll test it. This is all the stuff you typically do when you build an application internally, whether it's a website, a web application, any kind of technical project or, and code. Maybe it's C code, you, it's always the same, the same idea. Model, take the people, have them write code and test. In a path platform approach, what you do is we can automate all that. And in the last version, in the version we published yesterday, it's going to be a one-click action to take the data I, should, I just showed you and to push them to the web. And because it's a one action, maybe I won't need any help with a microphone. <laughs> we'll play that pretty soon. Then from this contact database, I can go and say, I want to export an API to create an API from scratch. Why a custom API? Because it's going to be your API. It's the one of your choice. I'm going to give it a name. API it is. And we'll give it a domain. It's going to be live. It can be a domain self-hosted by API Spark platform, or it can be one of your domains. It's what we call custom domains. And this, you know, this is an option we provide. And you can use it with a freemium plan. Then we'll create our API from the, co the contacts database we had just before. And here it comes. This little... 
what I would say, it's, it's a bee house. And it's a place where they stock their sugar. And you'll have an endpoint, which is the, the true live endpoint where you can call your web API. I'll keep with the presentation and we'll deploy it right away. Next step, you've created your web API and you, you need to deploy it. What you usually, usually do is you choose a deployment target, whether it's Amazon Web Services, you, you choose a management solution. How can I monitor that my web API is alive? I'm doing business with it. I need to check that it's still al alive. The performance are great. I need to have a team that comes live when the API goes down. Uh, they need monitoring. And you need to enforce your SLA and be report that. This is generate a two to three people team that handles this task. In the platform as a service approach, what we propose is that we'll do all these jobs and tasks for, task for you. Just click the deploy button. And what we do here, we generate code from the description you've made, your data store and your web API. We generate this code. We instantiate a virtual machine. We put the code on that virtual machine. You can choose the region. It can be US, it could be Europe, close to your customers. It can be both. And we'll go to the closest place where you want your API to be called and close to your users. If you want to go to Asia, you can click the button and ask, I want to be present in Singapore, Asia. We do all this provisioning for you. The endpoint is ready. Now I'm going to call my web API and show you that it's alive. And this is my, my endpoint, your domain slash contacts, the name of your API, the, what you provide to your people. Just come to this address and you'll be able to push data or to get data from there. Of course, it needs to be secured. And you'll have a login authentication codes. Then I call my web API and wait for the answer. And I get this piece of XML because I chose XML. Maybe I would like other formats. Maybe I would like JSON instead. And I can walk around, choose my different data types, and work with them. I want to go back to the presentation to talk about the promotion. We built one API, we exposed it, we document, we document, we now need to document it and to push it to users. What we provide here is two tools. First, you can use the, I will go straight to this slide. You, first, we use, we have a catalog that is embedded inside the technology. If I come back there and I engage you to go to the API Spark platform, take the catalog. And you'll ask, what has been exposed by other people that work here? Maybe it's going to be your APIs that will be there, or APIs from other, other ones. And it's like a marketplace where you have plenty of them, hundreds of them. We also propose geographics, analytics, who's called your API. You've got complete reporting in real time. You can also export and generate reports to treat those data internally. To finish with what I was talking about today and to make a summary, 
Finally, my web API is going to be an internal approach. I have to choose what's the best for my company and for my organization. Whether it's going to be a do-it-yourself, own made with a rest -led framework or another framework, web API, or I'll use a platform as a service that will help me do and build this web API in a few minutes. What we see, the vision with API Spark and the rest -led framework with vision, what we strongly believe is that there's going to be a lot of web APIs tomorrow for different purposes, for different reasons. Maybe you start with a mobile, a first API for mobile phones, and tomorrow it will be for connected TV or for connected objects. Whatever the case, within a few years, 2017 maybe, there will be millions of API. It's like, you know, everybody, know, everybody has a website today. Nobody, you know, it's like the WordPress. And we believe in APIs for masses. And we strongly think we need, we need a tool, all of us, to build those web APIs. If you want to start in the, your long web API trail, um, I encourage you to take the first steps with API Spark. We've got a freemium park, a freemium plan. You can build five web APIs, 100,000 calls. That gives you a pretty good place to start with. Publish this web API, see if, it's prof if it can be made profitable, share it with friends, and then you'll be able to go to larger plans when your business starts. You can also join us. We are recruit recruiting a lot at this moment. We have raised the fund this summer. And the research and development teams are based in Nantes. It's the best place to live uh, in France. And uh, we've got a pretty large uh, area where we'll enjoy working with you. Thank you very much for your time and wait for your questions. <laughs>